Hi. Welcome. <clears throat> well, so much in my head there. My voice got a bit croaky. And if you're one of those people that loves it when videos just start and you jump right in, well, maybe take a breath. Maybe take a pause. Maybe allow yourself to be with that part of you that loves everything to go to time, that loves everything to be exactly, correctly, how it needs to be. And while I jump over to my notes here, I'm aiming to be with you for about an hour. About an hour. Um, if you need to leave when the hour ticks over, if you have my blessing, and if you want to stay on, if there's something that I need to stay on for, then by all means, hang around. So what I'll be talking about today is Stephen Kessler's the five personality patterns. I'll also be expanding on it. So there's stuff that I'm going to be talking about that you won't find in the book. You'll only find it from someone who studied core energetics or Wilhelm Reich's work or Alexander Lowen's work or John Pirakos's work. Me, the man that mentored me through all of this worked with John Pirakos. Um, you don't see that very often these days where the person that passes on the teaching is a few more degrees removed from the original teacher, which is neither here nor there. But from my mentor's point of view, what he saw in the core energetics space was that people were avoiding, or therapists were avoiding, taking people deeper into the more primalistic aspects of what it means to be human. So in this whole presentation, what I have for you is you'll walk away with some new wisdom about how to navigate your life, how to navigate your breath, how to navigate relationships. And if you're watching it on the phone, that's cool, that's fantastic, great. If you're watching it on the PC or a screen, there'll be an opportunity to use a, a QR code to vote um, later in the presentation or the training. So I'll be jumping, because it's just me, I'll be operating the slides and I'll be jumping <clears throat> in and off the screen. So if you hear a pause, because I'm doing something on screen here, then give yourself permission to also take a pause. Maybe even take a breath. And if you feel frustrated at the pace of how I'm speaking, or maybe it's too fast for you, <clears throat> excuse me, this is good. When, I'm, when my throat gets clogged, it's a good sign for me that there is an opportunity for you to be with all that feeling. And then towards the end of the training, there'll be multiples of invitations that I'll be giving to you um, that you can either accept or be like, no, I don't want that invitation. So without further ado, and that saying is so cliche to me, but here I am using it. Without further ado, I'm just going to check to make sure I'm live on Facebook here. Yeah, looks good. Let's double check to see the dashboard here. Yeah, great. And if anybody's watching right now, I can't actually see, just throw in the comments, yes, I'm watching. Yes, I'm in this. Uh, just to make sure that this is, you can hear me okay and everything's going well before I start on my rant, wisdom rant. So I'm just going to share the PowerPoint presentation here. Beep. Okay. Now, straight up, what you're going to, what I'm going to be speaking to is that there's a survival pattern and then there's the personality patterns. And when you go into a survival pattern, these are the reactive or repressive traits that you, you do to make you feel safe. And the reason I use those terms, reactive and repressive, is because it has crossover with the gene keys. You could also use introverted or extroverted, but there are, there are non-present states. 
right? You're, you, you shift out of presence, yeah? So who you really are is presence. And when you get activated or traumatized, you go out of presence and you can either go internal, which is repressive, or you can become external, which is reactive. And for the most part, in the modern world, it's the reactive trait that can be, depending on the environment that you're in, the one that's worshipped. And then the internal ones, like, no, that's how you need to be. That's, that's the correct way. You just need to be internal with all of your feelings. With all the, no, there's a fine balance here. There's a middle way here. The yin, the yang, the middle way. There's a middle way here. And if you're someone who waits for change or waits for something to happen to them or says, oh, I'll do it someday, or one day, someday and one day are not days of the week. So if you're listening to this and saying, oh, I need to buy that book one day, I need to buy this book someday, or I'll listen to John's replay another day, all of those statements are a form of a survival pattern. And if you own it, well, either you're going to listen to it or not. Either you're going to get help or not, right? And thank you for people that are commenting. That's great. Uh, I'm going to duck into the dashboard here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Danny, David, Ginny. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Awesome. David and Danny. Great. So what might come up as I'm speaking is you might notice when one of these strategies or these survival patterns come up for you, usually when you get scared or distressed, something happens. Someone invites you into something. Someone says that, oh, wow, you're really attractive. Or someone says, hey, can I get your number? Or maybe you're the one that's asking for numbers, right? Or maybe you're the one that's saying, oh, you are really attractive. Right? There's a... A thing can come up, which is why in the art of mentoring and coaching, I send people to do homework. I request that people do tasks because it's in the action you're presented with. Can I be present or will a survival pattern appear for me? Right now, if you've got this far, great. Um, I'm going to be talking about things that are that might upset you in a way that that you might believe that Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny doesn't exist anymore. So if you're someone who likes believing that that Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny exist, then maybe you could switch this off now and go do something else. Because I'm going to speak to confronting things, which you might not want to hear. Like my, recently, my nephew was told that Santa Claus doesn't exist. And he went into a catastrophic tantrum. So a catastrophic tantrum is a survival pattern. And that's okay. So just preparing your, your central nervous system for some challenges here, right? And I'm going to jump into slide two. Now, what you'll see on your screen here is a bunch of black characters with bubbles around them and things going on. And what that is some of Barbara Brennan's work, which is what this work was distilled from, as well as Wilhelm Reich's work, as well as Alexander Lowen's work, as well as John Paracos's work. But what I'll be talking about in this in this training is client examples. This is going to be super content dense. So you'll be receiving downloads and upgrades that might feel like years worth of information into an hour. That's pretty normal for my client sessions. You will receive many, 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 many iterations in one sitting. It will feel that way. Sometimes you need to take a rest, jump in a bath, go for a walk in nature to integrate all these things. And I'll also be putting this up on YouTube as well, purely because the Facebook I know the Facebook player has limitations. It can be really annoying when you're watching something and you alt-tab or someone calls and then you lose your place. 
We're putting it up on YouTube too. Taking a sip of water. Drinking water is a trauma response. So, I'm joking. Now in this, like your body has been shaped by trauma. And when I mean shaped, I mean literally your body shape has been impacted by trauma. Yeah, this is characterology. This is what the five personality patterns speaks to. Is that depending on how your physique is, there's an indication on where your trauma comes from. And while the, and these energy patterns here of how they can feel to other people and how you can experience them yourself is a layer to how trauma has impacted your being. For example, like if I looked at this, the, from the bottom row, the second from the left, second from the left, the silent, obvious brooding, that's very much an uh, enduring pattern type. The endurer brings in and down. Um, the leaving pattern tends to withdraw. So they go up and out. They can also go beside themselves. You can feel them displaced. They could also have a porcupine defense. And you might, as I'm speaking to some of these, you might recognize this either in yourself or other people that you've loved or work with where you might find you're around someone, all of a sudden you can feel this, oh, they don't want me to be around anymore. You know, that can also be a porcupine defense. You just feel, you can't really give this person a hug because they're like, eh, get off me, eh, don't give me love, don't give me that, right? The oral or the merging pattern, I'll speak more about all of these in much more detail. I just want to give you an overview of this chart. You can feel them sucking the energy from you and these people can over speak they tend to not feel their core because their core self is missing or is is the volumes turned down on their core self so they can suck energy in and this is a womic type injury there's plenty of others here could be for another conversation but i just want to give you an overview that there's multiples of ways that people can relate to themselves and other people by using their their energetics now, next slide. Now, this one could be one of those Santa Claus Easter Bunny moments. And I've got many friends and coaches and therapists and influencers out there who swear by some of these personality tests, right? And so for those of you who've done these personality tests and find you end up with this introverted or this um, almost a, a collapsing energy type, um, or you've done like a disc profile, and you just always end up being the support person, or you're always about the results. Um, well, all of them are based on survival patterns, right? Oh, I say right, assuming that you agree with me. But all of these are based on survival patterns. And the survival pattern is a, a performance. It's how you got to where you are today. So Myers-Briggs, Enneagram, the big five, also side note, you can radically change your big five doing this work. Love languages are also part of this too. For example, like a merging pattern person, you can never touch them enough. You could, you could, you could basically attach themselves to you like Yoda, carry him down a journey. But there's just never enough for a merging pattern person until they learn how to find that, that self-love within themselves. But like I mentioned just before, surviving patterns are not who you are. It's who you've become to survive. Okay? So the reason you're watching this YouTube right now or this Facebook video right now or this training right now is because you've learnt some very creative techniques to survive. And those survives come from these five personality patterns. 
and they all correlate to stages of development. But what I really want you to get through here and get into this is that all of these personality patterns, all these things, they're not who you are. They're who you've become. For example, um, like big five, like in neuroticism, it's usually the rigid that's the most neurotic. And in that neuroticism, they can also find it really hard to feel who they really are at the core. So while you might loud and celebrate that, oh, I'm neurotic, yeah, but can you feel? Can you feel who you are? Can you feel what you need? And the same thing crossover with the, the Enneagram, like the Achiever, is also another classic rigid trait. The individualist is more leaving pattern. The investigator can be a combination. And the eight, the eight's one that gets a lot of credit, but really they're more psychopathic, they're more aggressive type. Oh, also, there's, I might mix languages here because I'm speaking about a topic that I'm passionate about. I can get, I can get a flood of terms that come through me and I just pick one. So there's a, patho a pathologizing terminology to use, which is like I just said, the psychopath. But in Stephen Kessler's work, he's made it a little bit more softer. I'm just going to show you my face for a minute so you can have a break from the screen. He's softened the terminology. So you, he, the, the original terms like psychopath and oral and masochist and rigid has changed. And then the mat, uh, what's the one? Yeah, the psychopath, psychopath, the schizoid. So the schizoid as well. So all of these terms are from pathologizing psychoanalytic dogma, theory, ideology. So what Kessler did, he softened them. And then the rigid and the aggressive is still there. But those terms needed to be used for those specific types. Like when I see a rigid person, if you don't speak in the rigid language, then you, you miss the communication. And then with the aggressive, they need to be able to own that. You know, maybe I'm maybe I'm a bit aggressive. Maybe there is something about me that that you know I want to try and dominate people. Yeah. So in all of that, all of those those sub those sub those personality tests, just take them with a grain of salt. Okay. The, the what that what it says that you are might not actually be who you are, which can actually hold you back because you start identifying you start identifying with these things, and then you start relating through those things like oh I'm an ESTJ oh I'm a I'm a uh, uh, a two whatever that is kind of what, what that is we can jump back to um I'm a yeah I'm a helper I'm a helper, but a helper really is just looking for like self love. Now, the, the humanitarian, which is also another term for the merging pattern, for the, uh, the enduring pattern, you can just start identifying as these things, but it's not who you are, it's how you survived. And then in that, let this land, do you want to keep surviving for the rest of your life? So if you're watching this, I'm assuming no. Uh, I need to put that back up. Here's one of those moments where you want to be patient, patient. Oh, I can minimize the screen, it goes down, but that's really handy. All right. So next slide. The importance of emotional wellness. Now, the reason I speak to this is on your screen right now, I do not know what that chart's called. It's really sexy. I love charts. I have a kink charts a good chart mm, I love me a good chart what you'll see in most of this work is and working with me is finding presence and then in presence you can also find your breath they're kind of correlated with each other and then you find individuation you discover who you really are beyond all the trauma which is effectively I help you remember who you are before you were traumatized and I can help, even help you remember who you were before you were born. 
and this is the ancestral, this is the bloodline wisdom that you carry. And while science might not necessarily have caught up with that yet, a lot of the people that I work with are very powerful when they connect to their ancestral line, whatever their spiritual gifts can be, right? This wisdom that they have that they didn't necessarily learn from book, but when they speak it, it's truth and people listen and they're profoundly touched by what they have to say. And on this chart here, you'll see depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, schizophrenia, other mental disorders, autism spectrum disorders, bipolar, conduct disorders, idiopathic, and ADHD. So what you'll see here, I've got a reference for this at the end, I think it was from 2020 maybe, um, but the references are at the end. What you'll get from this, the systems that abide by this, is you get treatments and you don't get cures. So if you ask someone that listens to this, this is from the DSM effectively, the DSM-5, if you ask them, can I be cured of my depressive disorder? They will say, no, you can't. Can I be cured of my anxiety disorder? No, you can't. So, can I be cured of my complex C PTSD? No, you can't. So what I say is, yes, you can. Yes, there is a cure to all of these things, but they're not so much as a disease, they are a survival pattern that you've used to get here to this point in time. And as you can see here, as the ages progress, so we're even like zero to four, you know, the, uh, what have we got here? Like idiopathic disability, then we've got conduct disorders, um, then ADHD starts to creep in, you know, in these, these first years here. And we've split into male and female. But the biggest one here, like the depressive and anxiety disorders, like look at that bad boy. Like, that's a, more than half. And then schizophrenia starts to bulb out here, right, in these um, 20 to... 50 type age ranges, right? And anxiety, depression, and schizophrenia tie directly into the five personality patterns, where if you're not connected to your body and you're not doing what you need to do, you're not operating from your core self, you will become depressed. If you're living in the past, and your body does that, your body is looking for reconciliation because it knows at a genetic level that it needs to be nurtured. If it misses out on that nurturing and natural stages of development, you get more anxiety because you can't, you can't picture a future that is safe. And then schizophrenia is just a nice little bow on top where your mind's trying to make sense of all of this and it can't. So it continuously just fragments off and splits off. And schizophrenia is a leaving pattern injury. And because the DSM doesn't speak to the importance of grounding, the importance of being around people, the importance of all these basic human needs, then people miss out on developing a connection with themselves, which is sad. And the parallels here and the importance of emotional wellness is that if the therapy or therapist is not taking into account the body, then you're going to be left shorthanded. If it doesn't include the breath, you're going to be left shorthanded. And in that, people who have a higher rate of anxiety and schizophrenia, breath work can make it worse, depending on the type of breath work. But then do you know what type of breath work do you, that you need, right? Like I have people that go and do ice baths and holotropic breath work and they're more leaving pattern and they don't know how to integrate their experience because those kind of breath works, particularly ice bath type breath work and holotropic breath work, splits you out more. It doesn't bring you into your body, it splits you out from your body. 
So knowing the correct breath work for you is also important, right? Which you don't normally get taught that because the body's missed. Like seriously, if you're any kind of, if you do breath work, if you do anything that relates to, to, to people, like this can help you. These five personality patterns can help you. They can help you in business. They can help you in relationships. They can help you in your coaching. And they're very simple to, to identify what's going on for someone. And it can really help someone because it can catch the trigger as it happens as opposed to the, the, the disaster happening in the real life and they're missing out on an opportunity to guide someone through a breakthrough, right? All right. Da, 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 da. Also, in all of these, um, there's a highly functioning component to all of these. So you can be a highly functioning depressive and anxious and schizophrenic and not even know, right? High functioning anything. It could be a high functioning psychopath, high functioning anything because it's high functioning alcoholic because your outward appearance, you've perfected what your outward, perform, uh, uh, your outward appearance looks like, but internally you're denying your reality, which just shows up as some kind of illness, just shows up as something else later down the line, or you explode because you can't keep it all together. So denial results in very radical pendulum swings from the repressive to the reactive nature. Ah, deep breath, everyone. Follow me. Take a deep breath. All right, next slide. Nice little picture here. Female silhouette, -y, not silhouette, and then a male on the other side. The sun, yin yang, and earth. Lines, one down the bottom there, touching earth and the feet. That was unintentional, but it's a, it's a convenient, beautiful mistake, and I love that. Uh, and then sun at the top there and vertical lines going to them the reason i drew this is because i wanted to visually represent the central part of this work well i'm 30 minutes in and what the work does is it connects you to your core self and the connection to all that is and ourselves and the reason i'm giving you this groundwork first is because you need to know the context of where it comes from is it John Parakos, Wilhelm Reich, Alexander Lowen, all those funky dudes, and Stephen? Stephen Kessler just synthesized it into a really cute little bite-sized form. It's tasty. Is that they really wanted humans to connect to themselves and connect to the earth and connect to all that is. And that you can connect to each other much healthier when you do that. And what this work does is it finds your unique you. It finds the you that you've forgotten. It finds the you that's been smothered over by narcissistic partners or self-absorbed parents or um, family secrets or family shame or being abused early in life. You discover yourself, who you've forgotten yourself to be because you weren't allowed to be yourself. Right? That's why this work is so important. And the reason I use yin yang is because I, I prefer yin yang. Um, you could also use masculine and feminine, but what happens with that term is it ends up getting conflated with male and female. And a lot of polarity work does that. It conflates male with masculine and female with feminine. They're two distinctly different things. Ah, all right. Now you're going to see my lovely face, and I'm going to be talking more about beep. transition point. Fantastic. Um, more about the pa the personality patterns. Straight up, the leading pattern. Okay, it's also known as the schizoid, the intuitive, and the empath. And what's here is emotional detachment. And this, the, all of these survival patterns, personality patterns, track with the stages of development. And if you're someone who's familiar with the stages of development, um, like from zero to six and six to 14 and 14 plus, this also has crossover with gene keys, um, is that this is early lifehood injury. This can be womb and before, and 
the womb to the first year two ish um, of when you're learning how to be in a body you're transitioning out of a womb space which is where you don't need to really take care of your body your mum's doing it for you but the what happens here with a leaving pattern is they tend to leave their body so when something comes up when something startles them they go somewhere and you might have encountered this in relationship or peers or family where you can be talking to someone and then all of a sudden their eyes kind of glaze over and they're fantasizing about something else it could be the past it could be the future it could be a song you say something that just activates something in their body it triggers the survival pattern and they just disappear and I mean, this, happen, this happens with, I've seen this happen in partners, I've seen this happen in clients, where I'm talking to them, and they go somewhere, and that's leaving pattern. And they can have this real difficulty with connection and intimacy, and there can be this real numbness and disconnection from feelings. So to be able to help a, a leaving pattern person into their body requires presence, because you're actually anchoring their body here by being with them and that's what i do a lot of therapy is just co-regulation listening and allowing that person to remember and not criticizing them or condemning them for whatever they're remembering that's therapy in a nutshell like really good healing work um and that if, just to be able to do that to most of the populace you'd see a complete shift in consciousness um, of, of humanity but what happens here is they want to leave like their attention and energy move away from what is distressing them like they feel scared so oh i've got to get away so either you move away physically i'm just, just uncomfortable i'm just gonna i think you hear my mum calling you know or oh i think my phone's ringing you know and oh, also the environment can help them do it too like when i'm working with someone a phone will ring or the dog will come on the camera or something else because there, there's a distress and someone feels it and they want to come in. Like the dog could be a emerging pattern style, but there could be something that's there, right? There's a, I want to help you. I want to help you feel this distress. Be with the distress. But either way, the, mer the leading pattern wants to get away from their body. And in sex, this can also occur with them splitting off in sex. Something happens and they just go into like a, a fawn or freeze response and because the body's not there anymore. And that again, survival. PTSD, this is part of it too. There's a survival component, it's complex PTSD. You learn to leave your body. Someone's screaming at you. You learn to leave your body. Someone's expressing a deep emotion can't be with it my body can't contain it because the leaving pattern person doesn't have enough embodiment to hold what it means to be human in their flesh suit so they just leave right so the symptoms here you avoid emotional expression you have a preference for solitude this has crossover with human design the hermit and the hermit and the leaving pattern have crossover in behavior behavior and um, ADHD, autism, neurodivergent symptom syndromes with no biomarkers, most likely a leaving pattern. And what I mean by biomarkers is that, well, are, are they taking a blood test? Are they doing a genetic test? Is 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 point to the point to the ADHD, the autism, and neurodivergency in your blood system? Is it? It's not like a cancer, is it? It's not like the flu. Like it's, it's something else, right? Show me the brain scan. So what happens here is, is a syndromes are a catch is met for everything that's unexplained. And just because it has a category doesn't mean that there's something else underneath that, which is usually trauma. How were you born? Were you born C-section? Was it a natural birth? Was your mother nurtured through the entire prepartum and postpartum period? Prepartum? Was your mum nurtured? Was there a husband or a partner or a loving community around your mum while she was preparing to bring you into the world? 
did was were you given birth under an aesthetic was there a delayed cord clamping when you came home from the hospital were you loved and nurtured or were you put up for adoption all of these things which are fundamentally not explored in science because it's too complicated as a, uh, just end up thrown into syndrome buckets later down the line also if you're someone who gets a bit off with the fairies off with the fantasies you know also the the leaving pattern person is also the most at risk of psychotic breaks and schizophrenia like i mentioned before but the real gifts here so i've spoken about all the serious stuff right? this is the gifts okay take a deep breath with me oh allow that to fill your whole body right they're super intuitive okay so the leaving pattern yeah are the hsps the highly sensitive people right they're geniuses when they tap into that genius they can pull in these gems of wisdom from the from the akashic from the field from what's going on for people um, they can speak to spirits channel and connect into the other realms right these are the empaths this is an empath gift okay bodily wise they tend to be quite slender uh, it can be quite challenging for them to metabolize food um, what else is there they tend to lift their legs up off the floor when they start to feel like they could be sitting in a chair and all of a sudden i'll see a uh, someone who's a leaving pattern pull their knees up you know um, they love nature there's something about there's a safety in nature for them um, they can push their energy into things and what else is there yeah this is very spiritual they're very spiritual people they're a type uh, a pattern and the solutions here are to bring this into presence right so mindfulness practices to connect with the body um, somatic experiencing being touched somatically like having someone loving touch to guide them back into their body and then cultivating safe and supportive relationships to allow for the emotional expression and that these people are uh, they part of them does and doesn't want to be here these are also the star seeds the lemurians they'd rather be over there rather be back home on a star somewhere in a spaceship instead of being here right now which impacts their presence and they also their ability to, to bring in love relationships and money into the world because they're not here money is an earthly thing it's an earthly realm thing right so they struggle with that because they don't want to be here podcast wise i speak about ellen musk elon musk he's one of this this type um, do i want to say anything else about the leaving pattern no great fantastic merging pattern here we go next chapter now the merging is also known as the oral also known as the networker and what they have is a real fear of abandonment and then there's a dependency on relying on others for validation and security and a real difficulty setting boundaries like both the leaving and merging have difficulty setting boundaries because either their boundaries were not shown how to be or they just there's just something about them that they, they don't they lack the this is what it actually is they lack the inner core and connection to self to set boundaries the body is boundaried learning how to be with the boundary of the body is what helps you live life so when you connect to your core self the core self has its own internal energy. Barbara Brennan called it the star heart or something. But you have you have your own your own way of being that emanates a vitality that gives you boundaries. So if you're a, a theory boundary person, you're not gonna you're not gonna get all the benefits of setting boundaries if you're you in yourself are not boundaried, right? They also like they want to connect. They really want to connect and they can also over speak and they also think that you are the solution to their problem and this could be an unconscious thing um, your action and energy move toward them uh, and you're nice to them so they like and help you right so 
what they do is they tend to want to merge with you. Like you might, they might not have any sense of personal boundaries. They're like, hey, I'm going to hug you. These are the guys and potentially girls and spiritual circles that just when they stare at you, they're like, I want to get into your soul. Like, oh, that's a merging pattern person. And there's an innocence in that. And there's also a, a vampiric, sucky nature. If you remember that chart before of all those people, um, like the sucking nature, like, I want to get in you. Like, yeah, I want to feel you because I can't really feel myself. I want to feel you because you feel good. And this is an injury of the womb as well. Like mother can't feel, child does not learn how to feel, mother can't give child um, vitality and unconditional love, then the child is denied that and they become really entitled. It's right in here. One of the symptoms here is they're incredibly entitled. And what you might see here in, in a lot of activism is that this injury is prevalent. So people that do become the activist type archetype can really have this entitlement, this piece that's missing in them, that they don't feel sustained from the world. They can't trust the world because they've been denied, abandoned. So they try and get it, get it, give me your energy, give me your money, give me your presence, give it, give it, give it, right? And there's a lot of over complimenting from this type. They tend to give you a lot, but then when you ask them for something, no, I don't want to give that to you. But John, I'll, uh, the classic example, of, of, I know two male um, merging pattern people that live quite close to me. And I would meet up with them for coffee. They would talk forever and I'd barely get a sentence in. And then they'd start talking about what I was just talking about before I'd finished. And they'll be, be so happy that I've been helping them and listen to them. But then when I ask them for something, but oh no, I can't, I can't do that. I can't, I'm not allowed to do that. I can't do that. I'm not tired of time for that. So because there's no sense of a core self, whenever you ask from something from them, they're like, oh, but this energy is mine. It's what I might, it's all mine. It's all mine. Entitled, right? Entitled. I don't want to give this to you. This is mine. So real clingy. Symptoms are really clingy, right? Fear of being alone. They're the ones that don't know how to hang up the fucking phone. Hang up the phone. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> feel your feelings. Feel the sucky energy. Is this important right now? Probably not, right? They also seek a lot of validation from others. Is this okay? Am I doing it all right? Am I, am I, am I, is this okay for you? Right. They over speak. And like I mentioned, entitled. And what I missed about the leaving pattern is they also scan the leaving pattern, not the merging pattern. The leaving pattern is scanning hyper vigilantly. So while an empath might think, oh, I'm feeling up all the energy in the room, what they're actually doing is hyper vigilantly scanning for danger, which is a survival pattern. And you can try and turn that into a gift, like, yeah, now I'm gonna check everyone's energy out. You actually don't know who they are because you're scanning their energy. You may or may not be correct, but they're just gonna mirror what you are incomplete inside yourself. Solutions for the merging pattern is bringing them into presence. Like self-compassion and self-validation, learning how to set healthy boundaries, which requires a connection to the core and the book give you some great examples on how to do that. You can explore this in therapy. Some things are going to work for the merging pattern, but if you don't, if you don't get taken into the womb, you, the merging pattern just comes back. The in, merging pattern is a specifically a wombic injury. It's a mother, a mother denying child love and un unconditional love. You got to sort that out. It's a motherhood injury, mother to child injury. Some examples is, um, I haven't done a podcast on him, but Woody Allen, classic merging pattern, energy. You just think about him if you know who he is. Merging pattern. Also, a lot of Indian yogis have the merging pattern. Culturally, and I've seen this pattern, 
is that um, Indians and Pakistanis tend to have this as an injury because the, the, the nurturing through motherhood process has is, 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 is been starved multi-generationally. So you might see that a lot of Indian. And also, um, body shape-wise, um, they could be quite collapsed, a bit of a hunchback. And uh, their eyes can tend to protrude a little bit more out of the sockets than, than, than the other injuries do because there's a, a longing to get, to get I'm like I'm looking, I'm looking for something to, to give me some food because the mother couldn't actually hold that energy within the child. Deep breath. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Three more patterns to go. Three more patterns. Merging, merging, psychopathic, masochistic. Great, 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 great. Cool. Yeah, three more patterns to go. The aggressive, the enduring, and the rigid. So I said psychopathic, but it's actually the aggressive pattern. And the, Stephen Kessler calls it the aggressive because it's... Um, <laughs> read about it. It's fucking aggressive. They're out to dominate. All right, there's a focus on power and control. And there can really be a lack of empathy here. There can be an intellectual understanding of the person, but real empathy is missing. And um, they can have a manipulative or exploitive behavior. They can be pretty good at crocodile tears too, um, because it, it's a, it's a sub, it can be derived from the rigid type, which it learns how to perform. So the more information you get, the more rules that you can learn how to perform by, and so you're just a body of rules. And then in that binary body of rules, the, the, the all, the, uh, 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 it's not analogy, what's it? Um, analog. The analog part of you is missing because it's all binary. It's all yes and no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. So there's a gray area there which the aggressive pattern can miss out on. But basically, like the aggressive pattern person just wants to fight. They're built to fight. They're built to be hypervigilant about the fight. And what happens is when they get activated, when this survival pattern comes online, the energy can flow up and out their mouth. Like they're out to shock, they're out to dominate. And the, the type that is the most dominated is the enduring pattern. Because the enduring pattern just kind of stands in and then hunkers down. So the psychopath, sorry, the aggressive and the endurer have a relationship where the, the psychopath can get off on, the aggressive type can get off on discharging on an endurer, and then the endurer just takes it and sits there. But it's dominance, right? And the, the aggressive type is, is, is almost celebrated in the corporate sector and in politics. Um, but what happens here is they, they get really big and intimidating and even angry to coerce, to pull people into compliance. Or there could be another type, which is more my, my style, is I get more charming. You know, my, but my intent is still to control and dominate. Right? And so I can get either more charming or more aggressive. And that when I'm in, when I'm in pattern, that's what happens. If I don't get my own way, I need to check, am I, am I, am I in pattern right now? This, I don't know if you know this, but that making that horse sound is actually relieving. It relieves your body. It discharges something, which can bring you back in presence. Yeah, I'm actually, actually am so non-attached to whether or not you want to work with me. I'm actually so attached to like Cassie, my wife. If you want to come with me out to dinner or go do this or whatever it is, right? I'm so unattached. Right? I'm going to go do this thing. I'd love to have you, right? Symptoms here, like I mentioned before, difficulty with empathy, manipulative or deceitful behavior, and impulsivity and risk-taking. And that can... yes and no. But it's fine. There can be high-functioning risk-takers <laughs> where you would never see what's going on underneath, but they're just taking a risk to get the high of, 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 that, of that addiction. Right, and the solutions for them to come into presence 
is developing empathy through present perspective taking exercises and what really happened here is is a early childhood portrayal where they didn't feel safe and they had to rise up and to rise up and learn how to dominate whether it's a mum father grandma caregiver something school even in order for them to survive they've needed to draw up energy and project it to dominate right otherwise they wouldn't be here today but to really understand the empathy and, un and explore the underlying wounds and insecurities will also activate a survival pattern of I don't feel safe with you. So when I've worked with psychopaths or aggressive types in the past, looking to trust, trust is a huge thing, huge for the aggressive type. And the minute you say something which activates their mistrust radar, and they're always looking out for it, they go into pattern, and you're going to try and rebuild the trust again. Um, what happens there is the per they don't really trust themselves. They don't really trust themselves. Underneath all of it, they've got a whole bunch of rules and experience of what they've had in life, of what they trust and don't trust. But at the core of it, they don't really trust themselves, which is devastating if you really feel, think about it. Because on the outside, they have this performance of I'm all together. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm decisive. But then when you really look inside, there's a tiny little like trapped little boy or little girl in there that's terrified of life. And sometimes medicines can help this. Sometimes like ayahuasca and mushrooms and I haven't tried it, but 5-MED, 5-EMO. There could be some other um, toolkits there. Ex-military PTSD and CPTSD, they've tempted to become the aggressive type. It just suits them. But underneath all of that is just terror. A lot of these relate to the believing pattern and the, the aggressive pattern have got underlying of terror. I can't trust. I can't trust. I've got to dominate because I can't trust. Podcast examples. I've done lots of podcasts on the aggressive type. And Trump. Trump is an example of an aggressive type. Really good example, actually. Um, he's the perfect mirror for a lot of aggressive types as well. All right. Ah, deep breath with me. All right, eight minutes left. I'm going to go over. Just giving you a heads up. The masochistic pattern or the endurer, as Stephen Kessler speaks to it, the endurer. Okay. And the endurer or the humanitarian is another term for them. And they tend to be. They, they carry more adipose tissue, and by adipose I mean fat, as armory because they've been dominated and they just want to push people away in whatever way they can, so they build up armor on their body. You also don't have to have a lot of adipose tissue to exhibit this survival pattern, but it would be in one of your top two if you do carry more adipose tissue than your average human. Yeah? Okay. So they have self-sacrificing behavior. And again, difficulty asserting boundaries. They might know what their boundaries are, but being able to assert them can be a real issue. And then a lot of internalized shame and guilt. So they tend to want to hide. You know, their energy comes in and down to help you hide. So you hunker down or you endure whatever's coming next. You know, you can take on more responsibility because you're such a used to enduring. Like, yeah, give me this additional task. I'm just going to hold this pain in my body. Yeah, give me more responsibility. You know, tell me more how my life is fucked up. In that, the endure type will stay in talking therapy forever because it's a type that doesn't actually get the real help that they need to move forward in life because you need to acknowledge and help them through the shame and guilt and self-flagellation, the self-sacrificing piece, and then teaching them how to assert their boundaries. It's not just an intellectual thing. They need to know how to touch into their rage. An endurer that doesn't know how to speak, speak from their rage will forever be manipulated, forever be dominated. Forever in that, in that flesh suit. 
And what can happen is the rage can become explosive and then they're surrounded by people that shame them because they haven't got the internal mindset work or the body set work to know that their rage and their anger is welcome, right? So when you learn how to feel and your feelings are welcome, you're embodied enough to express yourself from the feeling which naturally imparts boundaries without having to go through the intellectual exercise of boundaries because you just are boundaried, right? So in that, the endurable also agree on the outside, but then internally believe something completely different. But then when they start to feel what all their, their hunkering down is, they can be really heavy and stuck. And they're also the most to procrastinate. They wait for <laughs> the image I have, a Pokemon is Snorlax and the real life animal is Panda. Right, so pandas, I don't know if you're familiar with pandas, but technically they should not be here on the evolutionary ladder because of just how not threatening they are. Um, we keep on researching, pouring energy into them to try and keep them alive. Anyway, that's a sidebar tangent that my sister's always complaining to me about. My sister's a biologist. And in that, they hunker down, Snorlax, so they won't move until there's something that's going to make them move. So this is where the procrastination comes in. They wait for the absent, they have the crisis to come where they absolutely have to move and then they move. And what happens here is then when they move, then they go back to stuck again. And what happens here is this is self-sabotage, the endurer injury survival pattern is this is the at the root of all of the self-sabotage in your life all of it all of it it's the injury that will continuously self-sabotage you and in order to move through that you need to have a look at the child that was continuously violated and invalidated and made to be wrong their emotional landscape was made to be wrong and then your self-sabotage becomes self-support and then self-miracles and self-luck. Um, otherwise, you just keep on self-sabotaging. Other symptoms here, putting others' needs above their own, difficulty saying no, feelings of unworthiness, self-depreciating humor as a defense. You know that chart before where I showed you depression? That's, this is, this is that massive red bar. Endure. So that they don't know how to say no, so they just say yes to stuff which starts the self-betrayal cycle. And when you're out of alignment in that self-betrayal, depression, depression, that's what's there. That's what, that's what we label it as, depression. It's really just self-betrayal, just self-betrayal. It's that simple, simple, right? Now the solutions here are building self-esteem and self-worth through compassion and self-care practices. Now you might think, I just need to do some more affirmations. Yeah. Have those work out for you. Because if you look in the mirror and you see someone who's a, a piece of shit, it doesn't matter how many times you tell yourself, I'm not a piece of shit, I'm amazing, I'm amazing. The mirror's still there, okay? You can't lie to what you see in the mirror. If your core self is being neglected, all the performances in front of you will be in there too. It'll, it'll show up in your dreams, if you still dream, um, where... You just, you're out of alignment. So real self-esteem comes from being able to own your emotional landscape. What am I feeling? I feel like shit. I feel like I don't want to be here anymore. I hate my life. Like, why has everything happened to me? Why is everything, my, my sister has an amazing life. My cousin has an amazing life. Why is all the shit always happened to me? Being able to be witnessed in that, guided through that, taken to the depths of that will set you free. And it might be layer upon layer to get to the depths of the depths of that, all of that. But once you do, there's no going back. It's a permanent upgrade. Like I mentioned before, once you know that Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny doesn't exist, you can't go back. So when you deal with the core injuries, you can't go back. It's, you become a completely different person. 
But learning the, mer the enduring pattern, when they learn the assertiveness skills, like through anger, game changer for a, an enduring pattern. Also, the endurer can also pivot into the aggressive type. And they're the hardest ones to deal with and negotiate with because they don't want to be dominated. And then the defense is that they want to dominate somebody else. So to help them move through that really needs to be an invitation which is a lot of times when I'm working with someone, I'll say, well, do you need, you want help with that? I've got something for you. Do you want it? They can say yes or no. And even though sometimes their yes can be no's, there is a fragment that gets through. Also, the, mer the enduring pattern is the one that, that most therapists get frustrated with because they lack the understanding of the body and they don't know how to hold that compassion in their field. That this person was invalidated for everything who they were as a child. So, and the endurer can also have sub, sub survival patterns like the, the leaving pattern where we'll be scanning, they'll be scanning the therapist to see what they're, they're thinking or what they're feeling just to confirm that they're not safe or confirm that they're not welcome. So for a therapist or a healer or whoever else is leading people to keep their vessel pure and in integrity with themselves, it allows for a deeper, a deeper healing. And healing the shame and the guilt in for the for the enduring pattern makes a huge difference. And but the saddest things for this type is they're the most likely the ones that kill themselves. Because there's just no way out. And because self-depreciating humor is a defense, that humor is great until you've run out of jokes. Until you run out of jokes, or there's no one there to hear your joke, or you keep using the same jokes over and over again, and you realize the devastation that you've been living a life that's not yours actually fucking lands on you. Ah, oh, shake that one off. It's a good one. All right, next, rigid pattern. Now, rigids, I love rigids. I, I have this survival pattern going on for me quite a bit. It's the one that's got me to where I am today. It's the one that helped me get my, 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 all my investments. It's the one that helps me in my business. It's the one that helped me design this, this, this training. And if those of you, if you've gone over the hour mark, feel free to go. I'm not keeping you here. You need to trust your body. Even ask yourself, do I need to stick around for this? You might get a yes and a no. There will be the replay. Um, otherwise, I'd love for you to stay. The rigid pattern is this real rigidity in their beliefs and behaviors. And like, if you look at my physique, this is rigid. Okay, so how my shoulders are, right? If I could show you my pelvis, I would. Like my, my jaw, how my jaw is. Um, chiseled kind of face ish structures um, I'm also part of the subtype of the rigid known as the passive feminine man that's one of my survival patterns I'll speak about that later um, but the rigid I'm like they're up front chest out <clears throat> they can walk correctly these are the lawyers of the world these are the, um, the rule keepers a lot of doctors are like this um, they love rules we just love rules love rules right but in those rules, real stuckness in beliefs and behavior. Like a rigid, it's not stuckness, it's a rigidity. So it's a, can't break the rule. So in that, the rigid can really struggle with flexibility, spontaneity, and play. Am I allowed to play now? Yes, you can play, son. What can I play with? I don't know, whatever you want to do. I don't know what to do. So rigids can really struggle with um, being creative in relationships. They can struggle being creative in the bedroom. They can struggle just being being able to play, being able to play with their kids, like properly play, right? Not play rigidly, if you get my drift. For example, when my son is playing and 
the rigid part of me, the, the survival pattern can come out where he's using something, but he's not using it in the correct way. And I use the bricks like this. And I use the buttons like this. It's like, no, he's John. He's fucking playing. There's no rules to play. Right? So the rigid can really struggle seeing beyond the rules. And when you're speaking to a rigid, if you don't use their rigid language, you, they can also try and dominate you or not listen to you if you're not speaking exactly how they're speaking. For example, with Cassie, like I wanted her to say, instead of asking for, asking, instead of her asking me to do things for her, I said, can you just tell me what you want? Tell me that you want you want me to come to bed now. Tell me that you want a hot chocolate now. Tell me that you want me to help you with Luca. I want, I want. Tell me how you want, right? And then she had a, a, an experience with um, her sister where she wanted to correct her sister's language. No, don't, don't ask it this way. Ask it this way, right? So the ridges have this thing with language. If you don't say it their way, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it goes over their rules. It's, it's hilarious. Once you identify it, when you see it, you just hear it all the time, right? So this is where techniques like nonviolent communication and other things don't work because you just try and, it's, it's a, you're trying to speak the same language, but it's not the language that's the point. It's the core self that's not connected to. Oh, I feel afraid. I feel you don't listen to me. I just feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's basically what's happening here. Symptoms of the rigid. Stubbornness and resistance to new ideas. Right? They want to make sure that everything is happening in the correct order. John, I don't want to work with you until this happens. I don't want this happens until this happens. I need to see that the timeline of my life is correct. Right? And to, to, for the, this to, I'll speak about the solution in a minute, but there can really be an anxiety in unfamiliar situations as well. Like for me, <clears throat> when I'm working into a, when I'm entering into a new environment, I can really feel my other survival patterns come up. Like my, my leaving pattern will appear, right? I'll be scanning hypervigilantly. I'll be cool about it because I've got all the charm from the aggressive type, but I'm scanning. I'm like, cool. Let's see who's. So he's safe here. Yeah, shoes he's wearing, clothes he's wearing, watch. Okay, cool. Yeah, his mannerisms. Yeah, he's holding the drink in his hand. Yeah, great. Ah, oh, music, music, music. Sometimes I'll look for the person who's, who carries the most authority and I'll go to them. Ah, yeah, cool. And that guy looks like a bit of an alpha. Yeah, cool. Let's go have a chat with him. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, she looks like, hmm, she's surrounded by a lot of people. Let's go and stand with that crowd over there and see what that feels like. Also crossover with human design here. But what there can be is real anxiety in a new situation. But then once I've done it once, I'm like, I'm in there. I'm like, let's, let's be all the, the other John that comes out, right? So the survival pattern is still there. And the more that you speak to it, the more you can confess it, the more you can be with it, the more all of it's okay. Right? And you're not, it's not a, you're no longer a victim to it you embrace it and you love it for who you are, right? So then it becomes a personality pattern, right? It's a pivot from survival to personality. It's like, that's who I am. But I don't want to change it. Like, I fucking love it. I'm good. Like, I'm solid in who I am, right? But in this, there can be to, for the rigid, a perfectionism, like a solid perfectionism. And perfectionism can get put on a pedestal. So I'm doing it perfectly. I'm perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah, cool. Who are you when you are not perfect? What happens when you're not perfect? What happens when your relationship starts to not look perfect? What happens when your books start to look not perfect? Your house, your wardrobe, your friends, your family. What happens when you start to look not perfect, right? So for the rigid, there can be a real shame that I'm not, I'm no longer perfect. I'm no longer abiding by my rules. Collapse. Not perfect anymore. Don't have it all together. Turns out 
actually don't have it all together. Turns out, I haven't got all the answers to things. Turns out, there's not a fucking rule for everything. Right? And the solutions here for the rigid is being able to practice play. And again, medicines can really help here. Like mushrooms can help to a degree. Um, things that help break down internal rule kits. So practicing, fle practicing flexibility and adaptability in daily life. Challenging rigid beliefs. And cultivating openness to new experiences and perspectives. So for the rigid, looking at what the opposite to the rule is and exploring it somatically is a, a good one, for example. Um, like, I will never drive on the wrong side of the road. That's a really good one. And what would it feel like if I drove on the wrong side of the road? Man, going against so many rules. Or doing a U-turn over a double white line. In Australia, you're not supposed to cross a double white line. What would it feel like? Oh, my God, I can feel that, you know. But then given the right circumstances, a rigid will break the rules. Like, if, if, if there's some threat, if there's something that's going on, the rule kit gets tossed out the window, and then something else comes in. And this is how the survival patterns work. It really depends on your presence. How present are you in the situation? You know? Like if so, if you've got a friend that needs to go to the hospital and they're in a dire state or something happens and there's a double white line that you're not allowed to do a U-turn over, depending on the, the pressure of the presence, you'll just do the you just break the break the law. You do what needs to be done to get to the goal, right? Dominate. Dominate the environment to get to what you want to do. And then podcast and resources wise, Jordan Peterson. I've done a podcast on him. Go check it out. It's in, on YouTube. Um, Kim Kardashian as well. So in the rigid, there's a subcategories. There's on the female side, there's one known as the hysterical female or the histrionic female. And then on the male side, there's uh, the passive feminine male. And they're they're subtly different, but they're called bridges. They're bridges between um, the two. And I'll, I'll talk more about that later. All right. It's the bulk of the bulk of it done there. So what I want to do is <clears throat> like if you if you listen to all of this and you heard something did you hear what um type you are right so if you're open to it actually why don't you go do it is if you have your phone handy like what personality patterns do you think that you exhibit like which one do you think is more you and if you're watching this on replay do the poll as well if you're watching it live do the poll as well like for me, I'm going to do it right now. It's, um, like which one did you hear was for you? All right, and then I'll continue on with some more of the slides. I'm just going to grab my phone here, put up the Slido. Like for me, I know solidly that most of what I do is rigid. And then <clears throat> my backup can be aggressive. And then um, a lot of my work, I do leaving pattern. Um, like that's that's most of those. And then um, enduring can show up in my relationship and and dealing with family. But then most part, most of the time, I'm <clears throat> on those three. <clears throat> and what happens here? <clears throat> excuse me. Is that you're born with all five? Okay, let this land. This is important. You're born with all five. Most, most, most likely in the ideal world, an even spread. And then as you grow, as you learn how to survive, other patterns merge, other patterns emerge, emerge, that, that help you live your life, right? So the rigid is a, a later life defense. Um, the leaving and merging patterns are early life. Then enduring is a little bit later, and three when you learn to, to when you learn how to like, defecate and learning how to potty trains around the the, the in, enduring patterns phase, and then the aggressive is can also be a combination of all of them, 
it can be early life and it can be late life. It's more likely late life because you have a bit more egoic knowing of who you are. But that you have all five. And then what happens is when you're surviving in life, two tend to emerge as the one that helps get through your life. And then once you start to identify when you are surviving versus being present, you can start to onboard these patterns start to work with you and you can get a nice even spread ish of all five. And then you can move through life knowing when you're going into pattern and when you're losing presence. And a lot of this stuff, presence boils down to the breath, like I mentioned in one of the earlier slides. So I'm just going to close that voting is going to stay up there, but um, the voting is still active, but if you haven't clicked on the QR, I'm about to pull the QR down. <clears throat> so transition, nice fade there. And uh, yes, I do want that to happen. And what I really want to share with in all of you in all of this is that this book, and I speak about it all the time. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very important book that can help you move deeper into relating in your business, in life in general. Things don't seem like such a big deal once you're present. You learn how to move with confidence and self-authority when you can be present. <clears throat> and the reason I speak to the book is because I've read Reich's work, Lowen's work, um, Paracos' work, and when I discovered the book, it's, it's such a simple way of getting your getting your feet wet, an introduction into these personality types. But in that, <clears throat> there's advanced ones as well. So you, they'll also speak to a compensated merging pattern, which is uh, another subtype of, of those. Um, and <clears throat> uh, and, and once you know the other types, <clears throat> excuse me, once you know the other types, you can see how they all work together. Right, so there's compensated merging, there's passive feminine, hysterical female, like I mentioned before. And what I also want to mention here is that medication can actually help to fragment the types further. It could be a bit controversial. Well, it does. Like when I'm working with someone who's medicated, I can hear the fragments trying to jump, jump out of their throat. I can hear when someone goes into a pattern and then it gets suppressed by another pattern because you're not feeling authentically I can hear when someone's um, smoking, I've got, um, weed, for example. I know when someone's stoned, I can hear it in your voice. So you're muted. Who you are is either muted or fragmented. And the important of the subtypes is that he doesn't speak to the, the hysterical female and the passive feminine man. <clears throat> Those are two topics which are avoided because <clears throat> of their controversy. And for me, I love controversial things because there's a truth, there's truth in controversy. <clears throat> so with the passive feminine man, you will see them all through the spiritual communities. A lot of passive feminine men become coaches and they can't give you the breakthrough that you need. A lot of hysterical females become coaches when they, they just end up bombarding you with more to the tasks and to-do lists and how to be. But really they need to discharge their sexual overcharge and a hysterical female can be exceptionally good between the sheets, but then once you start to relate with them, all of their injuries can start coming up. <clears throat> it's normal because they haven't learned how to be with their emotions. So that they know how to discharge really quickly, but they don't know how to use the discharge to go deeper into themselves, which is what I help them do. But all of these are about the breath. So whenever somebody runs out of breath, that's when the survival patterns are most likely inactive. They're in action. They're in action. And my last slide here, and before you run away, you might be, be already be feeling the temptation to run away, is, 
is that I'd invite you, if this spoke to you, do a post for me on Facebook or social media saying, I just watched this video in John Kai's Exhilarating Relationships group and I learned this for myself from it, right? I'd love for you to do that. It means it would mean a lot to me, and I have no attachment if you don't do it. And if you're an emerge an enduring type, you probably don't want to be told to be do, doing something. So here I am telling you to do something, and it would mean a lot to me if you shared my my content and gave me a reference in that because I see how important this work is, and there's not many people that are doing work like this. This is standalone work, and it's more than just getting sorting out your relationships with love men and money or whatever it's about identifying your core self it's helping you remember who you really are which is what i'm really here to do like under under all of the under all of the other marketing stuff that i do like ultimately what i'm really doing here is helping you remember who you really are and that's very challenging to market so i need to put it through the, the screens and the windows of what marketing looks like, where people are at. If I say to someone, oh, I'm going to help you remember who you really are and it's going to cost you this much, it's going to take us 16 weeks or whatever, whatever package that you end up doing or wanted to do. So I, don't, I, don't, I know who I am. I wake up and I remember who I am. It's like, okay, great. So how have your relationships been? How's your work? You know, I know who I am. I remember who I am. Okay, great. Fantastic. This call's over. It's not though, because there's so much more to who you are and who you become that's more than your survival patterns. So, the last thing I will say to you is um, the advanced aspects of my work deal with the rage and the lower self. And the lower self really is an art to go into. And the lower self is the part of you that would rather burn the world to dust than face your own denial. And it shows up in multiples of areas of life, including finance, including relationships. But what happens is when we just aim for all the positives, which they're important, like the, the higher self and the positive attitudes and all this, you miss out on all of the well and the depth of the grief and the rage that also carries a lot of wisdom. This is Gene Key 48. So, in order to learn how to deal with rage and terror and all of these more primal emotions, needs a primal connection to the self. And I speak about this in the, with, the, with the missing missing chakra. And what I mentioned before in a post earlier about the, talking about the empath and how they can't sustain confrontation it's because they're missing the connection to their primality because their body lacks the container to hold confrontation the part of them that would happily go head to head with a fucking tiger if their children were a threat or if something about their life was in threat i want to live is something that those earlier childhood patterns miss out on i want to live i'm allowed to be here my voice is important and it can have crossover with the merging pattern and the entitlement well, so when are you being entitled and when are you being who you really are? You need to work it out for yourself. And if you don't know how to connect to your core self, you don't work it out. This becomes a performance. So being able to be connect to your primality, who you really are at the core, requires lower self work and body work, specific types of body work that work with the legs. And then when your legs are done, you work with the pelvis. Then when the pelvis is done, you work with the... The stomach, when the stomach is done, you work with the chest, back and front. When the chest is done, you work with the throat. And it doesn't necessarily have to be in that order because everybody has blocks of trauma in their body that's stored there. For example, when someone's throat starts to get constricted, I tend to work their, their, mus their muscles down here and I give them some room and make, get, get, make a noise for me. Push into these muscles and make a noise for me. So, oh my God, John. I'm just pushing on this muscle here and it's hurting me in my lower back. Yeah, this is how the survival patterns can get trapped in your body. Working my jaw joint. Oh my God, tension headache. Yeah, because you keep overthinking what you need to say instead of just saying it. Maybe what you need to say is a fucking sound. There is no perfect words for it, which is why I use... I'm almost going to start wrapping up here, so take a deep breath. 
is which is why I use Oracle cards is because I don't have the language right now for me to stop and try and work out the perfect word I don't know but I know I'm feeling something and because I trust myself I trust the cards I trust what's going to come through it's absolutely perfect and maybe everyone watching it needs to feel this card maybe you don't I don't know when you know yourself you do know um, but I guess what I really want to share here is an invitation where if you want to work with me send me a message if you don't want to work with me and you got some really good value out of this share it in on your po a post somewhere the link might not work for people that aren't in the group which is fine just share your experience what did you get maybe it was shit and you learnt nothing maybe you just got triggered a ca cascade of triggers and you hate me John is unsafe to be with well, put that out there too I'm okay with all that but what I really want to share with you right now is what's the card? What's the card? Oh, this one, this bad boy. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Apparently, if there's any jealousy coming up for you, um, so do you want to be able to do what I do? Do you want to be able to speak like this? And there's an invitation for you to do that too. I can help you with that. Just take practice. I mean, I've worked in corporate for like. 17 years worked at a mega church for another five years as a director and a vision switcher so i'm confident you know, since i'm early teen i've been telling adults what to do how to do it but i did it because i committed and commitment jinky 29 commitment's what you actually need to hear learning how to be committed to your life because someone who doesn't know how to commit to their life will continuously live a half-life and commitment has a vibration and in that vibration, when you commit, everything else comes together in your life. Luck gets applied to your life when you commit to whatever it is that you're doing. So do you want to commit to yourself? Or do you want to commit to the survival patterns that have got to where you are today? Either way, the choice is yours. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your presence and your willingness to be with all of me through all of this. And I wish you an incredible, incredible, incredible week, month, years, future. And um, if you want to work with me, send me a message, put some comments in the post. John, I want to work with you. Let's have another conversation. Wow, an hour and a half. Underestimated that. These are the references. If you want to have a quick look, take a screenshot of that. Um, otherwise, I'll be throwing them up on YouTube as well. So you can... Um, Look at them at your own leisure. Bad love. Thank you all. Bye.